It's a Farm Friday. Let's talk Colorado Rockies. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Because BetOnline is where the game starts. So, Colorado Rockies uh, haven't been a great big league team this year, but tons of talent in the minor leagues. Uh, especially in the lower minors. So a little bit of a different format today. Segment one, just single A. Segment two is going to be uh, draftees and, and, and high A, and then th- the top prospects in double A, triple A, and the bigs in the last segment. So single A Fresno Grizzlies, and lots of top 10 prospects here. Five different guys that are in the top 10. You start off number four, uh, shortstop, you know, second baseman, Adele Amador, 2019 IFA, 5'11", 180, and 115 games at this level, 292, 415, 445, 15 home runs, 39 extra base hits. And here's the big thing, especially for a guy as young as he is. I mean, he was born in 2003, so he's not even 20 yet. 87 walks to 67 strikeouts. So... Uh, got to address that offense right away. Very, very advanced offensive approach for a young player. Uh, very polished. He he has done well. He's typically been one of the younger players at where, wherever he's been. Uh, rookie ball, single A, all of that kind of stuff. Um, needs to add some strength. So most of his 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 size and mass is in his lower half. So it can kind of you know he can. He has the, the the physical base to really get into a ball, but needs to add more upper body strength to really break out the power. I mean, 15 home runs, 39 extra base hits, not bad, but good strike zone approach. You combine that with some additional power that he'll get as he matures. A lot of guys, that's just how, that's just how they are. And... He's going to be an above average hitter. He's going to hit double digit home runs. I don't think he's going to be anything more than a, you know, 15 home run guy in the bigs. But I also don't necessarily know if that matters. He's going to be a middle infielder. He's listed as a shortstop now. Uh, I've kind of got him as ending up at second base. His arm is average. His speed is kind of average. And a lot of what he's done, he's that player that was always a good athlete growing up. And so he relies on that athleticism, that natural kind of ability to make plays at short versus having super, super solid fundamentals, super solid footwork and things like that. I think he's going to end up as a second baseman, but quite a, you know, a ways to go still. I look for him to be in high A next year. He's handled this level uh, about as well as you can expect, especially when it comes to um, plate discipline and walks. And I want to see him face some more advanced pitching. So, Adela Amador, promising player, top 10 prospect, top 5 prospect for a reason, but uh, want to see him with another challenge next year. I mean, the ETA on this, you're you're pretty you're still pretty good out. You're 2025 20, or so on the ETA here. Uh Benny Montgomery, uh, number 6 prospect in the system. He's an outfielder, 2021 first rounder out of high school. 6'4", 200, and his stats this year, he got into 56 games in single A. 313, 394, 502. Six home runs, 29 extra base hits, 21 walks to 71 strikeouts. So, the thing with Benny Montgomery, tons of tools, right? Speed is like 70 great, plus, plus. Arm strength is plus. Uh, fantastic athlete, right? So can be a plus defender in center field. Needs a little bit of work on the reads, routes, and reactions, especially kind of going into the gaps and especially the initial reaction off the ball. 
where he's going. It takes him a second to process the read of where the ball's going, and so his reaction's not that great. Uh, you know, just that's an experience thing. He needs a little more time with it. Um, raw power is plus, doesn't necessarily show up in games. And the question you have here is how much is he going to be able to hit? I think his hit tool is probably fringe to average. And we talk about this on the show all the time. Your hit tool or your power tool is only as good as your hit tool, right? So uh, he's got to find a way to get his tools into games more often on offense. And I think the key to doing that's going to be his swing. His swing has a big hitch in it. It's got a lot of moving parts. And he needs to streamline the swing and really shorten the swing, shorten the bat path into the zone, and and be quicker to the plate to be able to realize um, an average hit tool. Bat speed's there, hand-eye coordination's there. He's just got to get the swing more fluid, less rigid, and then get it, you know, so so that once he does that, he can then be prepared to take on higher level pitching. So, Benny Montgomery, a little bit of, of, of swing work to do there, but tons of raw tools. And if he puts it all together, I mean, you're looking at like an above average first division uh, center fielder who is contributing at the big league level, you know, uh, as far as double digit home runs and and steals, gr- you know, great defense, you know, good defense in center. If he doesn't put it together, you, he's one of those guys that might not even make it. And again, we don't talk about that outcome a lot on this show, but that's a that's a possibility with him. Um, a couple of other guys are all 2022 draftees who got just a taste of low A this year. Right-hand pitcher Gabriel Hughes, the righty out of Gonzaga, first-round pick, uh, 6'4", 220. And the thing here is, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on these guys because the track record in the big leagues is really small. Gabriel Hughes threw three innings this year. But um, fastball slider change is his arsenal. Uh, fastball kind of sits, you know, 93-94. Uh, can touch 97. Command looked better this year, so his walk rate went down. Uh, slider change. Slider's a plus pitch, wipeout pitch when it's on, not always on. Uh, really good job at kind of getting it glove side on guys. Uh, change up is inconsistent. It can be an above average pitch. I did, he didn't use it a lot in college. But just has to... You know, Profiles is a number four, number five right now because he doesn't have that consistency on the secondaries. Uh, So need to see him next year have more time to actually pitch before we can give a proper evaluation. Sterling Thompson, number eight prospect in the system. Outfielder out of Florida. uh, The other first round pick here. Six foot 200. Um, I'd say his defense is probably average to above average in the corner. Uh, Speed's kind of fringy. Arm is above average. So, uh, thing here is you're you're going off the hit tool. The hit tool is the carrying tool here. Uh, he can add some power. He but again, good hitting ability. Did well in college as far as hit double digit home runs. Very much as like a line drive, good contact hitter. Did really well against velocity. Handled you know uh, mid to upper nineties fastballs pretty well in the SEC. Um. Did a lot of pull side stuff as a amateur in college. And so want to see him add some power so that defensively he can do a little more. Played some infield as well. Think he's better in the outfield. Think he's better in a corner. Um, want to see him work a little more once he, you know, he can handle the velo fine, but work on breaking pitches and off-speed pitches. Sterling Thompson just has a little bit of an issue there. With some swing and miss at breaking balls, especially off the plate, getting them to chase and things like that. Uh, really good swing decisions at the plate usually, but you can fool them with a good breaking ball that starts in the zone and gets out of the zone. Uh, Jordan Beck, the other outfielder that they drafted, se- uh, first round supplemental out of Tennessee, six foot two twenty five, very very good athlete, impressive athlete. Uh, that. He ticked down a bit, like, or he 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 dropped off a bit as the season progressed. Uh, so I want to see him a little bit, you know, a little bit better conditioned. Six three two fifteen, you know, looks like a big league slugger. And 
The thing here, very long bat path, right? Takes him a while to get his ball or get his bat into the zone. And then he expands the zone a little too much. Almost looks like he's kind of guessing. So I think a little bit of work around um, pitch recognition and around shortening that bat bat path. Great against fastball, especially when he he feels it's coming and sits on it. Uh, Struggled with spin. Handles an off-speed fine. Just struggles with breaking and, you know, like with with breaking balls, with sliders, with curves, things like that. So um, defensively has a good floor, right? Above average runner plus arm. Going to give you good defense in right field uh, plus raw power. It's there. It's just a matter of can the hit tool come around enough for it. So Jordan Beck, high floor as a defensive outfielder. Um, good, decent power just has to work on the approach. In just a minute, I want to get to the high A Spokane Indians as well as some of the guys who were drafted and have not yet played or did not play in 2022 for this system. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can get the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. As always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information, live betting, uh, up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events MLB, MMA, boxing, golf. Obviously, uh, the MLB playoffs starting soon. You're going to, you know, as we finish the stretch run here, you're going to have tons of stuff on Bet Online daily. You're going to have futures as the postseason field is set. So head to Bet Online today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because Bet Online is where the game starts. Okay, so the High A Spokane Indians have a couple great players, but before we get there, I want to talk about a couple guys that were drafted that did not get a chance to play in 2022. A couple pitchers here. Uh, the, that's kind of typical. A lot of pitchers don't get a ton of time in uh, once the season ends. So. Right-hand pitcher Jackson Cox, 2022 second rounder out of high school, 6'1", 182. uh, Has one of the better curveballs in probably the entire system, right? Uh, I'd I'd give it a 70 grade. Very short, tight break to it. So not a typical curveball movement, but very effective. Has a fastball. He can run up to 95 or so. So you combine these things. Uh, very, very potent weapons there. Uh, Changeup is kind of uh, fringe to average, so something he's going to have to work on. you got to have a third pitch to be a starting pitcher in MLB. And then the delivery has a little bit of extra wasted motion. So something we're going to be looking for next year is how does, or how do the, how do the Rockies streamline that delivery to kind of take out some of the extra wasted motion, get his, direction straight to the plate instead of wasted stuff maybe he can pick up a little bit of consistency on the change and maybe a little bit of extra velocity on the fastball so uh, but a promising young prep player again really good curveball love that curveball think it'll do well um, in in Colorado as far as the movement profile of it it's not something that's going to be affected as much by the by the altitude uh, number 17 prospect in the system left-hand pitcher Carson Palmquist Third rounder in 2022 out of Miami. Was the closer in Miami for the first two years. Switched to the starting rotation. I thought he should have stayed as a closer because he was lights out. But had a very good year. So, six foot 185. The issue here, and part of the reason I liked him better as a closer, is the velocity was fantastic as a reliever. The fastball hit 96. It was a weapon. When he starts and he has to carry that over multiple innings, the velocity sits in the low 90s. Um, lefty, it's fine to be in the low 90s, but you just feel like you you had a, a unique weapon there, having a lefty you can throw in the mid to upper 90s um, as a reliever. But uh, change up, really good as far as swing and miss. It disguises really well arm action-wise off of the fastball. And then uh, sweepy slider. We talked about that a lot. The Yankees like that. A lot of the Colorado guys have had that power slider. This is more of a sweepy slider. I don't know if they're going to try to firm that up and make it more of a power slider or if they're going to keep it as that sweepy slider. But either way, 
I really, you know, I really like it as a pitch. Because uh, it all comes from this lower sidearm slot. One of those things, not a lot of starters have that sidearm slot. Uh, makes me wonder if he's going to end up as a reliever, if they genuinely do feel like he's going to be a starter because of that. But uh, great movement profile to the pitches. Makes it look really good. And then right-hand pitcher Connor Stain, fifth rounder out of UCF, six foot two hundred. Uh, fast, you know, love the fastball here. Mid nineties, touches ninety seven or slow. He has an above average slider, and he has one of those loopy curveballs. So a lot of movement to it. Uh, big drop on the curveball. Uh, change is a little below average, so something he has to work on. But he can throw strikes. He's got a repeatable delivery. And if I remember right, he didn't even he didn't allow an earned run until like mid-April. And he was mad about it. So he's one of those, one of those pitchers that has the mindset and the aggressiveness of attacking hitters uh, and getting them out and kind of take some of that stuff personally. So uh, like that, I like how the slider can can uh, miss bats. I think it's good. I think it's I think it could end up as above average on there. But talking about the guys that are in um, high A that got a chance to play in Spokane, uh, one of the guys you got to talk about, Drew Romo. Uh, 2020 first round supplemental out of high school. What rare high school catcher. 6'1", 205. He is borderline elite when it comes to defense. Drew Romo, I mean, great pop time, great arm, great athleticism. Love what he can do behind the plate. I do think he needs a little bit of work on blocking. And that's just something a lot of younger you know, catchers have to do that. As well as the game calling. The game calling is the big thing that obviously takes a while. Uh, pitch calm is a thing now. He didn't have that in high school. So he, he just needs some time to get in on, you know, to, to work on those things. But defense, borderline elite. Uh, offensively, he's a switch hitter. I think he's significantly better as a lefty. Uh, not necessarily to the point where he needs to just drop, um, where where he needs to drop uh, switch hitting altogether. But I mean, 700 OPS this year in high A Spokane, and there was a significant difference in lefty and righty. Uh, he did hit, he hit five home runs, 29 extra base hits. I think the thing here is. He has a contact first approach. Doesn't have a ton of launch angle in a swing. Uh, it's very much a contact first, very much a line drive oriented approach. I don't know. I don't like the power ceiling feels a bit limited based on what his natural swing looks like and the way that it shows up in games and the way his approach changes when he gets behind in the count and he's trying to stay alive and put the ball in play. Don't know that his power ceiling is ever going to be massive, although playing at home and cores will help him a little bit. Uh, but a guy that ultimately is going to end up being, uh, he's there for his defense. He'll have good he'll have good offense. He can be a first division regular, but he's there for his defense, which again is uh, projects out to be borderline elite. Uh, number 13 prospect in the system, third baseman Warming Bernabel, 2018 IFA, uh, six foot 180. 91 games this year between low A and high A. Uh, Two thirds of those were in low A. 313, 370, 499. 14 home runs, 40 extra base hits, 31 walks to 56 strikeouts. Offense is his thing here. Quality hitter, uh, really good gap and line drive power. He can send some balls out to the pull side, but he's really good at at, uh, putting a ball in the gap, hitting a line drive, taking some extra bases. Um, Defensively, has some stuff to clean up at third base. He's a candidate to get moved if he can't do that. I'm confident he'll be able to do that. Uh, I, I very much see him as a guy. He's a double A next year, triple A to a call up sometime in 2024. Uh, like the def- like like the potential for the defense, but really just love the bat, love the contact approach, the quality that you get there. In just a minute, uh, we've got some top prospects, the top prospects in the system including the fastest riser in this entire system, Ezekiel Tovar, uh, AA, AAA in the bigs, right here on Locked on MLB Prospects. And we're back. So this system 
has a couple top prospects. It's very bottom heavy, right? A lot of guys in the lower minors, but a couple guys that are in double A, triple A in the bigs. Double uh, A Hartford Yard Goats, the big guy here, outfielder Zach Veen. We called him one of our top five outfielders when we did the top, the top, t- the top, the Tuesday top ten episode about the outfielders. 2020 first rounder at a high school, 6'5", 200. And I feel like he's got true five-tool potential. We're still working on the power. Power's still coming in. But the raw power's there, and it's starting to show up in games more and more. So 126 games this year. About 90 of them were in high A, and the rest were in double A. 245, 340, 384, 12 home runs, 38 extra base hits, 64 walks to 132 strikeouts. So... Strikeouts were little, just over one a game, uh, but walks he walked about every other game. So decent rate of walks. Want to bring the strike down, strikeout rate down a little bit. We know from Monday's show you can't bring it down a ton, but you can bring it down a little bit. Uh, underrated facet of his game here: fifty-five of sixty-four on stolen bases. Um, now, caveat of in in a ball, you've got pickoff restrictions and things like that. Those will be in the bigs next year. So. You know, not quite sure exactly how much of that was helped by it, but good speed on the base paths. He's only, like, foot speed-wise, when you measure it, it's only average speed, but it's very aggressive with when he chooses to run, and then in defense, good reads and routes and reactions, and so it plays up off of being just average speed because he's so quick to get into his strides. He's so He has the long strides. So decisive when he chooses to to run on the base paths or in the outfield. Um, plus raw power, I think part of the issue here with getting it into games is he currently tries to pull the ball too much. I want to see him spread the approach a little more even, a little more uh, hit to all fields versus pull side stuff. But Zach Veen is definitely a top, I'd say probably top five outfield prospect in baseball right now. Because all of the potential's there, he just needs a little more development compared to some of the others to make it all realize into games. A guy that was at AAA with the Albuquerque Isotopes that was called up late Wednesday night, or uh, they announced they were going to call him up on Wednesday night, and he's supposed to join the team on Thursday. Uh, At the time of recording this, we, we don't have a lineup or anything yet, but Ezekiel Tovar fastest riser in this entire system has had just an absolutely phenomenal year uh something where he opened the season like l- last year he was like bottom of the top 30 he opened the season this year as like number nine number 10 and he is the number one prospect in the system right now 2017 IFA six foot 170 or so 66 games this year 318 386 545. 13 home runs, 31 extra base hits, 25 walks to 64 strikeouts, 17 to 20 on stolen bases. The big thing here for me is he moved from, he was in low A and high A last year, and he moved to double A this year, which is the biggest jump short of entering the bigs. And if you compare his low A numbers from last year to his double A numbers this year, he improved his batting average by about 10 points improved his on-base by 40, and improved his slugging by about 35. So he went into a harder situation and got better. And that's always a sign of a dude that has true talent and should be a top prospect, is going into a significantly tougher situation and doing significantly better. Or noticeably better, not significantly, noticeably better. Uh, his offense, very much a gap power, line drive approach, can hit the ball to all fields, doesn't have too much pull or anything in his game. Uh, defensively, best defensive infielder in this system. He makes it look absolutely easy. Very excited to see what he can do at the very end of the season here for the Rockies. There is a potential in the same uh, thread as a, a Michael Harris with the Braves where he may ju- he may come out of spring training next year and be at the big league level, having only had 66 games, technically 71 in the high minors. He spent five five games with AAA Albuquerque before this. But there's a potential that he may just end up as a big leaguer next year. Uh, really need to see what this final small sample size here at the, is at the end of the year. 
And then a guy who was called up uh, a couple weeks ago who's been playing at the big league level and I've been kind of following is Michael Toglia. 2019 first rounder out of UCLA. 6'5", 226. Played uh, 97 games in AA, 17 games in AAA, and then has been in the bigs here some. 249, 341, 511. 30 home runs, 51 extra base hits. Now, not all, um, not all rainbows and sunshine. Uh, 60 walks to 149 strikeouts, so the swing and miss is absolutely there. Um, but a guy that tons of power, he's the first baseman of the future. And the issue that you see with him sometimes, I mean, right now it's 20 games in, he's 214, 267, 443, two home runs at the big league level. But the issue you see with Michael Toglia sometimes is I think sometimes he's too passive at the plate and he's too pull heavy at the plate. Uh, You see that he's better as a lefty hitter. And so losing the shift next year is going to be some assistance to him because he's trying to pull stuff and he hits things into that um, right into the shift. Now, there's nothing stopping a team from moving an outfielder to shallow right field and replicating that shift. Uh, Don't necessarily know what's going to happen there, but I need to see him use more of the field to try to prevent things like that from taking away hits from him. Um, Power is absolutely there. Light tower power. He's got 61 minor league home runs in his career over... um, And again, he got got a full season in 21, a full season in 22... Um, and he got just 40 games in 2019. But power is absolutely there. Question is how much contact can he make to get it into games? 19 games at the big league level this year. He's got 25 strikeouts, uh, which is to be expected from a young player. But I like him getting this kind of window to, to see the pitching, to learn what they're attacking him with so he can work on it in the offseason. Is it spin away? Is it velocity changes? Is it fastballs up and in? What is the issue that's that's getting to him? And for a pool guy, you'd think, I, I don't want to throw a fastball up and into him. I want to throw him something down and away. Um, haven't dug into the actual pitch locations to see where everything is, but absolutely a guy that tons of power, first baseman of the future, good defensive actions at first, can pick, can pick really well, plus defender at first. He can play corner outfield and it's fine, uh, but... I like him at first base. Keep him at first base. Whew, what a great week this week. If you've made it this far in the video on YouTube, do us a favor. Go ahead and uh, and like and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a ton. If you've made it this far in audio, go out to your favorite podcast app, whichever you're listening to. Uh, leave us a review. does help with the show Discovery a ton. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Mailbag Monday is on Monday. If you have questions for the show, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Show's on Twitter at Locked On Farm. Or you can email us, lockedonmlbprospects at gmail.com. Have a good weekend. Until we talk on Monday, this has been Locked on MLB Prospects. Uh-huh.